Well, if I had to answer that question, I'd have to answer it for today or for last week or next week, depending on what I'm working on. So, for example, if I'm working on something having to do with content-based language teaching, I'll find myself constantly going back to Roy Lister's book on content and language teaching. If I were working on something having to do with pronunciation, a superb new book is coming out uh, by Tracy Doring and Murray Monroe. Uh, if I wanted a more general overview of what's happening in research and classroom instruction, Rod Ellis has a recent book that draws a lot on his experience in editing language teaching research. And that's a fine book that brings together a lot of different points of view. So it depends on what I'm doing and uh, what I'm focusing on. There are many fine, fine books, and so I could never choose a, a favorite. <laughs> when I first started teaching, well, when, when I first started working with teachers of English, I had come from a background of being a teacher of French, uh, also a background of doing research on early childhood language development. So I had to very quickly get up to speed by beginning a research program that took me into English second language classes. So I very quickly realized what I did not know and what my students hoped I'd know more about and started a program of research back in the mid-70s that has continued to the present uh, looking at teachers and students interacting in the classroom. So when I started as a professor in a program uh, training English language teachers, I really didn't know much about teaching English, but I made it a, a point to learn as quickly as I could. Okay, the, the title of the talk had to do with bridging the gap between researchers and teachers trying to bring together the interests that teachers have in improving their practice with the kinds of things that researchers are interested in and trying to find ways for researchers to communicate more effectively with teachers so that teachers understand that it is not the position of the researcher to tell them what to do, but rather to work with them as they mutually discover ways to improve teaching practice. So if it, closing the gap means working from both directions, researchers making themselves more comprehensible and accessible to teachers, but teachers putting in the effort also to seek out the kinds of information that can trigger ideas that they can then take away and explore in their own classrooms.